Hello lovely people, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all well. We are now back with another review. A review of a show that I have never previously seen before. If you watched my last video, you will know what show we're about to talk about. But here we are to discuss Rocky Horror Show. So if you want to know my thoughts, my feelings, stick around and we'll get into it in two whole seconds. Yeah, surprisingly enough, I have never seen a Rocky Horror Show. I have seen the film once. I went to a friend's house at the age of, I'm going to say about 15, 16, 17. Um, it was a costume party. Everyone dressed up amazingly. I think I kind of dressed up like Janet, but I knew nothing about the film or the show um and that is my only experience of rocky horror i've previously seen clips of the uh time it was recorded i, th I want to say at the peacock theater and that's probably wrong but there is one floating around the internet um but i've never seen it in the flesh i didn't know what to expect um and I am good friends with somebody who has seen it over like well over 60 times and I was talking to him throughout the week whilst it was at Wolverhampton I was like I don't know whether to go I don't know whether not to go we kind of had ideas to watch it together so he could like look after me <laughs> during the show but he um unfortunately couldn't make it and so after a little bit of peer pressure <laughs> I booked myself a ticket and I went to watch it at half five in the afternoon on a Friday evening. That all made no sense um, but yeah let's, let's, let's talk about it. So like I said I kind of knew what to expect. Um, I was aware of the story that is written by Richard O'Brien I was kind of aware on where the show was going, what the plot was. Um, it's a little bit sci-fi, a little bit horror, but altogether relatively tame and not too scary. Um, it is also directed, or this production is directed by Christopher Luscombe, and the show itself is celebrating its 50th year in life if you will um and it's safe to say that this show has very much a cult flop following the amount of costumes that i saw when i was sat in my seat with my little cardigan and <laughs> some slightly jazzy trousers i was like oh, i'm so cool i'm so ready for this and then i walked up to the theater i was like oh people go hard on this show and I just really enjoyed that aspect of it. I loved that it was like the people's favourite and how into it people got. The whole show itself just felt like a well-oiled machine or a, like a comfy pair of jeans that you wear so often. It had just that nice feeling about it which I can't truly describe but it felt a little bit retro but that still worked in its favour it's obviously set in like I want to say the 50s just based on the clothes worn by Brad and Janet but I don't know because of its age it just felt like a warm theatre based hug and I really enjoyed that and I can truly see why people go back and watch it again and again and again and why people get dressed up and have such a fun time. And the cast also was so like tight knit. Obviously this tour has been going on for quite a while now. Um, Wolverhampton was actually its last stop in the UK. It is now in Paris. Uh, or it's soon to be in Paris for about a month 
two months I think um so everybody knows everybody and it just felt like a family feel the cast is also relatively small I think I counted that it's a 13 strong cast um but it's a cast that works so well and is so strong so you have the four phantoms who are basically the ensemble who um have many hats many outfits uh and great work amongst them the four phantoms i believe that were in my show were reese budin Finan co carol beth woodcock and stefania dutois probably butchered some surnames and first names there so apologies if i did um rocky in our performance was played by ben westhead from the moment he stepped on the stage i was like oh okay i'm a bit overdressed here in me cardi and me trousers and me jeans and all of my outfit and uh, he's fully there in his pants and a pair of boots like well done <laughs> i was thinking I, literally he stepped on the stage and i was like oh okay i can't have chips for tea <laughs> <laughs> but Ben did a fantastic job as Rocky, someone who is obviously made by Frank to be his kind of plaything. Um, and I just really enjoyed watching Ben as Rocky. Eddie slash Dr. Scott was played by Joe Allen. Hot to patootie. That just came out really weird in my mouth, didn't it? Hot patootie um, was a favourite. I kind of knew that it was coming. I was like, yes. Um, I love that song just in general. And I was very excited to hear it performed on stage. Darcy Finden played Columbia and she was so high energy. I loved her so much especially in act two when she <laughs> she basically pretends to be a witch on a broomstick and it just got a little bit insane but i loved it and i found it absolutely hilarious our riffraff for the performance was understudy and understudy riffraff is ryan carter wilson he was amazing like i said i kind of had some knowledge of the show if not a lot and i knew that in over at franken i don't fully know the names of the songs yet um but in act one there is a moment when riff raff fully goes for it and it's like but better than that was but i was like i'm ready I knew it was coming and I was like <gasps> and Ryan did it amazingly I was like yes and I just loved listening to him throughout the show plus he worked that limp like no other and I just found it very, very funny. Susie McAdam played Usherette and Magenta. I have been lucky enough to see Susie in previous roles so it was really amazing to see her again in this show and she has always been a powerhouse and i just loved her as magenta like full on love full on love affair with susie as this role brad and janet for this tour have been richard meek and hayley flaherty i again have seen hayley in things previously i think she was my miss honey last time i went to matilda so to see her from miss honey to janet um yeah I've seen things and parts of Hayley I never expected to see uh, but <laughs> in all seriousness I loved both of those in their roles um, they obviously both have their moments to shine and sing solo songs and both of them were beautiful and the vocals on both of them were insane. Frankenfurter was played by Stephen Webb. I can't nick. I love Stephen Webb so much. His talent on that stage was insane. Um, I, I just, I was every time that Frank Furter was on that stage, I was like, okay, what's Stephen doing now? I was drawn to him, and I just loved. I just loved it. My friend after was like, has have you now seen Stephen in a new light? I was like, no, he's still amazing. 
I, I don't, I don't, it's just, blah. I loved it. And finally, we have the narrator who was Philip Franks. Absolutely hilarious. So funny. I did miss some of his uh, jokes just through translation because some of his jokes rely on um, audience and what they've shouted and sometimes I miss what was being shouted at the stage so to speak um so some of the jokes kind of didn't translate for me but that's just a personal problem and my hearing at the moment is a bit all over the place because I've been dealing with a cold but he was so funny to watch and he bounced so well against that audience uh, participation if we can call it because I just really enjoyed watching him do his thing and every time I saw him kind of walking on the stage I was like oh, we're ready for another laugh. Finally the cast member who wasn't a cast member and that is the audience themselves um, in the performance that I saw they almost felt like the 14th member of the cast uh, because they are so pivotal to certain moments and certain giggles being created that it just worked so well um, and I really enjoyed it <laughs> safe to say so thank you to about the first three rows of the stalls who were the I don't want to call it this but they're like the die-hard fans the people who go quite often because it just brought such a uniqueness to a show and I feel like it's probably the reason why the show has been doing what it's been doing for so long. Overall this show was so fun um, and I'm really glad that I did go and I did watch it all by myself. If it does tour or do another production um, then I definitely will look into watching it again maybe with friends next time and maybe with like a little bit of costume because I just felt like I kind of missed out on certain aspects by going on my Todd but hey ho I've now learned it's been going for 50 years now so I'm sure it'll be back again some time not too far from now that wasn't even English. Like I said, the tour is now taking itself off to Paris. It is there between the 27th of Feb and the 7th of April. I believe it's gone into the Lido 2 or the Lido 3. No, that's 3. Du. I don't speak French, haven't for a very long time. Um, so yeah, if you are able to get yourself to France, then I would 100% recommend going and watching this show. But yeah, I thought I would still film this review and do the previously mentioned last video um, to discuss a few things because you never know, it will be back. I, I definitely think it will. And I wanted to be ready and talk about it and I just wanted to talk about my love for this show. Now it has been brought to the surface. But anyway, I'm going to leave this video here and say thank you very much for watching. I love you all lots and I hope you come back for more theatre-based fun next time. But I'm going to leave it here and say thank you very much for watching. I love you all lots and I shall see you next time. Bye!